Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am so excited to share with you in our very first Full Pastors blog here at the Myrtle Baptist Church's website at our Pastor's Corner. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn with me to the Gospel according to St. John chapter 2. The Gospel according to St. John chapter 2, a very familiar passage of Scripture. It talks about Jesus turning the water into wine. I'll be reading from the New International Version. It reads on this wise. We're going to go verse by verse, and I'm just going to share with you some of the things that the Lord laid on my heart this morning as it pertains to this passage of Scripture. It reads, On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. I want to pause here just to say that weddings were very important occasions during the lives of persons in biblical times during the New Testament. Weddings were a sign of wealth and prosperity. Your ability to put on a fabulous party after a wedding, a wedding reception, reflected the fact that you were a person of means. So weddings were very important. It was a time when you made a good impression and you showed off your wealth to all of your friends, neighbors, and loved ones, and persons who you invited to the wedding. So that's the first thing I want you to know, that weddings during Jesus' time were very, very important. And likewise, there are many things in our lives which we value in our culture uh, to be very important that sets us aside and gives us prestige. Uh, one thing may be education. One main thing may be uh, your family name or your pedigree. But one thing that we learn out of this scripture text is that what really matters in life are not those moments when you try to make yourself seem grand or to make a big name for yourself. That's really not what matters. And life has a way of destroying things that our culture tries to dictate as being extremely important. And we see that happening in the text. Uh, this morning in our scripture in St. John chapter 2. Uh, this family put all of its attention, all of its focus on creating this spect spectacular event, this wedding, and then all of a sudden a catastrophe happens at the wedding. We're going to get to that in a moment, but life has a way of interrupting the plans that you make. Life has a way of interrupting everything that you try to construct to make things perfect in your own life. That's just life. But, but I want you to listen to this next part of verse number one. It says that Jesus' mother was present. And, verse two, Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. So this couple, this bride and groom who was preparing for this great wedding feast, not only did they plan all of the events, not only uh, did they make sure that the decorations were in place, but they made sure that they invited Jesus to the wedding. Now, let's get to the problem in verse 3. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Now, pause. The main point that I want you to understand in this verse 3 is that when the problem arise for the persons who were planning this wedding, when they ran out of wine. Now, let's just talk about that for a second. Now, during this decade in biblical times, wine was a very important, much like today, wine was a very important part of a wedding celebration. We had a little mix up there. Wine was a very important part of the wedding celebration. And when the wine was gone, that meant that the party stopped. But we can assume, according to the context of our scripture, that the wine must have run out a little earlier than expected. And so when the wine went out, ran out, the text shows us that Jesus' mother went to Jesus and asked him for help. What's the first lesson that we can learn, brothers and sisters? In the time of trouble, it helps if you already have a relationship with Jesus Christ. One of the things that many of us try to do, many people try to do, is that we wait to start praying when things are going bad. We wait to start worshiping and lifting up the name of Jesus when things are going bad. But, but you ought to get some insurance, some spiritual insurance in your life and do just like the people did who were planning this wedding. They invited Jesus into their lives way before the wine ran out. That's what I want to encourage you to do. Brothers and sisters, that's all I have for you today. Make sure that you have a prayer life, a firm prayer life, that you read your word, that you spend time in worship and prayer. 
That is what we call inviting God in. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. If you have a praise life, if you have a prayer life, if you have a worship life before the storm comes, when the storm arrives, you can cash in on all of the deposits that you've made into the bank account of your soul by calling on the name of Jesus. And the text says that when they called on Jesus, that Jesus answered their request with instructions. Pause right there. The text says that Jesus said to them, go and fetch me some jars and fill them with water. Now, the people who were standing around Mary and the bride and the groom could have questioned, we've come to you because the water, the wine is run out. Why are you asking us to go and get water? They didn't ask that question. They followed the commandment of Jesus and went and did what Jesus said. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we ask God to answer our prayers. We ask the Lord to do things in our lives. And then when God instructs us on what to do, to be a part, to be chain age, change agents, to be a part of the change that we are wishing to see. Sometimes we want to ask God, well, why do we need to do it like that? We pray to God and ask the Lord to give us a house. And then when God instructs us to go and to seek the bank for a loan, then we want to question God and say, God, I don't have the right credit. Brothers and sisters, when you are seeking a miracle from the Lord, that's the time to be obedient to what God instructs you to do and not to question God. The text says that they didn't question God. They brought the jars, brought the water, placed them at Jesus' feet, and he turned water into wine. Brothers and sisters, in your life, you may be empty. You may be running low. You may be feeling as if there's no help. There's nobody to support you, nobody to give you strength, nobody to give you a word of encouragement. But I'm here to tell you that you can call on Jesus and Jesus will turn your empty barrels into the wine of spirituality and the wine of life that will bring bliss and joy into your life that will never run dry. As you leave this pastor's blog today, I want to encourage you to spend more time in prayer, spend more time worshiping God, spend more time reading your Bible, invite God into your life because I got a word for you that you may not want to hear, but it's very true. Trouble is on the way. Trouble is coming, but if you have a steady relationship with Jesus Christ in the right now, all things will work together for the good of you because you love the Lord. Bless you. I love you with all of my heart. And until the next time that I am with you with the new pastor's blog, I want you to go in peace. I want you to smile. I want you to love everybody that you can, but most importantly, love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you acknowledge that God is within. Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. God loves you. I love you. But remember that God loves you most. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.